Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you for joining us again. If you've been a long time subscriber, Kevin and I really appreciate you staying with us and watching these demos as we do them. If you're new to On The Torch, you're new to Glassblowing, welcome. Thank you for watching. Please turn on subscribe and notifications for more Glassblowing content. Absolutely, we love uh, sharing demos with you guys and we love when you guys share your projects with us. We've been seeing all kinds of stuff. You've been uh, hashtagging on Instagram and it's just so awesome seeing, you know, yeah tip or a trick we may mention just oh my gosh look what you guys did with it yeah it's, it's just so awesome cool. it's awesome that hashtag is revere glass school and kevin and i both have our notifications turned on for that so if you put that up we will definitely see it absolutely i, I want to talk a little bit about the online school and i put a lot of thought into how to help you guys get the most out of glass blowing and so I, originally the price was 49 dollars a month for access to all videos I'm gonna lower that to just $9 a month, access to all videos. Uh, for $49 a month now, you're gonna get access to all the videos, plus every week, you're gonna be able to be part of the watch party with me where we watch the new video and I make myself available to answer questions on your studio setup, the demo, anything that you want. That's all available at the online school and you can check the link there. It's pretty exciting, please join us. There's some really exciting stuff that Kevin's gonna share Right now, this is also happening on the online school. Absolutely. So if you guys uh, may not be able to afford that for the videos, Dustin's also going to be posting up which demo is happening each week in the Facebook group. Yep. And everybody will make the demo, post their own examples of it, and kind of have a, a community collaboration about, the, uh, about each demo. So that's pretty sweet, the On The Torch Facebook group. Yeah, the On The Torch fa Facebook group, the class Pipe Making One starts November 9th. It's absolutely free. Just join the Facebook group On The Torch and if you'd like to watch the video demos, they're $9 a month. If you really can't afford the $9 a month, shoot me an email to dustin at revereglass.com. Let's see if we can figure something out so I can help you get better at glass blowing. Absolutely. And you're still gonna be doing the workshops with artists as well. Those will be separate. Yep. And we have one coming up on December 5th. Uh, Colton Hindle will be here for a jewelry workshop. Yep, master, master jeweler, amazing work. I love his work personally. If you guys have any interest in jewelry, please check it out. The class is only $99. You get eight hours with Colton Hindle. He's gonna make some pretty cool stuff and that's December 5th. And I think there's a little picture that we'll throw in here for you guys, maybe a mm -hmm. link. Absolutely, absolutely. We wanted to thank our sponsor, mm -hmm. Mountain Glass Arts. Fantastic place as always for tools, color, supplies. And if you're lucky enough to be close enough to uh, stop by and say hi, they're also a wealth of knowledge. Yeah, they. what I found out recently is they off their uh, living wage certified. So all their employees make a livable wage, which is amazing. You know, it's tough to run a business. It's tough to have employees. There's so many expenses. So it's really nice that they've committed to making sure that everybody that works there has a livable wage. Absolutely. I love the support for, for the community from Mountain Glass. And as always, thanks uh, to Mountain Glass for sponsoring these videos. Let them know that you watch this in a video and I think they'll give you a discount. But I think we're going to get into the studio and make this stand up Sherlock Bubbler for you guys. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Uh, a little cool guy with some serendipity. I love that color. Let's yep. hop in there. Let's do it. See you guys in the shop. All right, you guys. So the first thing I'm going to do is prep up my section for the centerpiece of the can. So I'm just cleaning up my blow tube and I'm using these really cool shears that Joe from Mountain Glass sent me this week. The link is in the, the description of the video. And these are some affordable shears that you could use that'll get the job done. Absolutely. So you cleaned up a blow tube to have it ready here for your North Star Yellow. Just closing up the end to get a nice round bottom and you'll pop a hole and uh, seal that up as usual. North Star Yellow, and I think I've said this before, is really one of the most underrated colors in the library of colors. I really love the way that it looks and the way that it transforms from like yellows to like kind of purpley reddish tones. Very cool color. So you're just, uh, you had previously prepped this up a little bit, get it about the right size. So just pulling it off the stub of tubing there. So you have a nice straight piece of North Star Yellow to work with. Yes, and this will be for the center of the can. I'm just gonna heat that up, round that out, make a nice round bottom. And then you're gonna condense this back a little bit and make it a little bit, a little bit wider and a little bit thicker. Yeah, you can do that by just holding it back like Kevin said, letting the gravity kind of pull it back and then blowing just a little bit. And that's gonna make a bigger, wider diameter. 
working your way down the tube there, starting off at the end where you made your round bottom. Now you're focused kind of in the middle, putting a little more air in there. And this is gonna, you know, start to dictate the size that your finished piece will be. Just gonna get that back in the flame. Then blow just a little bit. I love the way that the, that color blows out where there's those little clear dots on there and the little lines. I love it. I love the yellow. It's amazing how much it changes from hot to cool too. Yeah. Pop the hole there using your reamer. Open it up. And you're going to switch uh, switch ends for your blow tube handle there so that you can shape the end that was close to your original blow tube. Just connect those two. Nice hot seal. Seal scale number 10. <laughs> Maxed out. Uh -huh. Goes to 11. And then we're going to take <laughs> off the other side and blow this out so it's all nice and even. Just putting that heat in there with your Mirage Flame. Making sure it's all nice and hot. That whole end of the tube there. Puff it out. And you can do this in steps as always. Very rarely is it a single move for anything in glass. Yeah, especially borosilicate pipe making. There's there's a little bit more single move action stuff with traditional furnace work or traditional lamp working. But the way that boron moves, we really want to do each step as precise as possible and as fluid as possible. And sometimes that, that actually means heating up in sections. So now you just even that out a little on your marver and now you're going to pop a hole so this will be ready to connect up to the top and or bottom sections of the can when you have those prepped up. Yeah, we're going to show you guys a couple of interesting things in this demo. I'm going to show you one of my favorite colors, which is serendipity. And I'm going to show you two different ways to use the flame so that you'll get two separate, totally separate looks. And it's all the same color. And you guys will, I think, find it really interesting to see what different flame chemistries will do to the same color. So you just prepped up a little piece of jet black there to use for a lip wrap, made a little stringer, and you're gonna wrap that right around the opening to kind of differentiate the sections. Yeah, and then I'll have a little bit of leftover glass called a bleb, and I'm gonna heat that up and then use these shears, straight shears, to just trim off that little piece right there. And it almost snaps it, snaps it off. You kind of let it cool a little bit yeah. so it really breaks it off nice and clean. Yep, yep, yep. So now we're going to heat that up, use the reamer, open that up so that it's a nice even section. And I'll be able to attach the yellow section to the serendipity section. For those of you that don't know the color serendipity, what it is is actually amber purple over white. Uh, amber purple over star white. It's a North Star color. Totally, totally. And amber purple is a color that gets lots of cool trans color transitions as well. And so you get that over some white and it just gets more saturated. And this is a section that I prepped up ahead of time for the demo. It, the tubing that this came from was very narrow, probably about 15 millimeters. And I knew that I had to prep it up bigger for this piece. So before Kevin came, I used the lathe and I just condensed this tubing down and then blew it out so that I was starting with about 35 millimeter tubing. A little bit more close to the size that your finished piece is going to be. So you don't have to do so much messing with it while you're working on the piece. Yeah, and I'm gonna take it in half, and then half of it I will use for the bottom of the can, and then I'll use the other part for the top of the can. You're gonna do a flame cut here, just putting some heat in there as you pull them apart slowly, letting that glass condense down into onto both sections there. Yeah, and this tubing is actually pretty thin, and the serendipity tubing itself is particularly fluid and viscous it moves so fast and it, it doesn't really need a lot of heat so because the tubing is thin and it in and of itself does not take a lot of heat to get to the correct temperature it's a super super liquidy situation very soft color you know just a little bit of air will make it move a lot yeah so you're being very gentle with it here as you marver it down get it nice and spherical or nice and cylindrical puff it back out a little and you're condensing this back to thicken the walls a little yeah, I'm trying to thicken the walls a little bit, but even even as I'm getting it thick, it's still going to move way faster than the yellow. Really, almost any other color I've ever used that's a borosilicate color. For some reason, that white and amber purple together make it just super soft. Because individually, neither one of them is that soft. Mm -hmm. Something about the chemistry. Yep. So I'm heating it up, condensing it back, and I'm, I'm using a very bushy propane-rich flame. And this is going to create a really 
uh, apparent haze on the top of the of the piece so it's like gonna be yellow kind of um, greenish a little purples and but yeah. but mostly opaque and yeah. like kind of uh, striated almost yeah. yeah I would call it I mean and this is not the most popular look that people go for with the serendipity it's a totally acceptable look you can use it if you want I I did it in this demonstration to show you guys really the variation that a single color could get depending on the flame that you're using so you condense that back into a, more of a sphere putting some air in there and this is going to be the base of the piece so you're going to make a, a foot on the actual bubbler i'm going to make a foot heat that up and then blow a little bit and then open that hole up you flare it out a little with your jacks there going with one blade riding it along the cold glass on the inside there for some stability and now you use your nice steep octagonal reamer to get that open i love that octagonal reamer in fact i think i have some new ones coming that i will show you guys Ooh, when they come very nice so you grab that north star yellow out of the kiln there and you're going to seal those two together nice hot seal and there's a lip wrap in between those two so that's going to you'll be able to see that after it's all blown out i'm going to remove the blow tube and I'm still using a real rich propane flame here. And that's going to just create this film on the surface of all that metal. You're going to pull this out, pull a nice termination there, and then start to uh, even the size of those two sections out. And of course, they move very differently. So you're going to need to focus you know, more heat on the North Star Yellow than on the Serendipity to kind of get everything moving. So there's a little bit of a hole there. And so what I'm using is the BC Metalworking Tungsten Pick. And I just went in there and I, I saw where there's a little bit of a hole and I just pulled it together just a little bit and that really made the seal nice. So definitely a good tool to check out. If you see BC, let them know that you saw it in the video because those are really great tools. Absolutely. And you know, you kind of noticed that hole when you went to start puffing it out yep. and you got no pressure. Yep. You knew the air was escaping somewhere. So now you're focusing your heat on that uh, section there on that seal where those two sections come together and starting to puff it out from there one little trick that I've learned about if I blow into something and I can tell that there's air leaking out then and I can't find out where the hole is if you put your piece in your mouth turn it and then have the the section kind of around where the flame is you'll actually see the air going into your flame and pushing your flame aside and then you'll be able to tell where on the piece the hole is coming from. Absolutely, kind of a little interruption of the flame yeah. uh, flowing. Marbering this guy down using the forward edge of your uh, marber pad since it's still spherical and a little bit larger diameter at the end there. You want to marber just the back section. Totally. And now I'm just heating it up, trying to really make this base sphere the right size and shape. Putting some air in there. Being very careful with that serendipity. You don't want to blow too hard and have it come out of shape or off center or something like that. Just gonna try to really get a soaking heat in there, but I gotta be gentle with this with this piece because it's so soft. So I'm just heating it up and holding it back a little bit and starting to make that foot on the bottom of the piece. Just letting gravity and using a little bit of air to counteract it and that'll really bring that foot out. You can see how much it flared just from that, just from gravity there. Now you're going back in and you're gonna heat that up, finish the shaping off and use your marver pad to get it nice and flat. So you can see me holding it back using gravity and you can see that really falling into place. I'll push it down on the marver, making sure that it's nice and even. Keep your finger over the end there to keep the air from coming out, keep the pressure inside. And now you're going to open up a hole on the bottom and using your mini torch since the color's so soft that really lets you heat up just where you need it to move yep exactly and there, there's a several different orders of operation to make this style bubbler a lot of people like to do it like this where you end up with the blow tube connected to the bottom of the can some people will have the blow tube still connected to the stem and and do this part at the end so you definitely both ways are totally acceptable and in this piece, I'm going to show you guys what happens if you forget to put your carbon and you have the blow tube on the bottom. So there's that as well. But 
I, I personally think that the blow tube on the bottom and then shaping the neck is, is a good order of operations for this piece. Similar to the way you work on mini tubes a lot of the time also. You know, you'll attach both and then once you have the, the neck shaped, you'll switch over to a neck blow tube. Yeah, it's similar. So I'm using my jacks here to flatten that out, make sure that's really nice and prepped. And then I'm gonna go back in with a jet black and create another lip wrap. And you can see the, the color on the bottom is so fumy because I used those uh, rich propane flames to heat it up and shape it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Finishing off your lip wrap there. You got another little bleb you'll have to snip off, heat it up, let it cool a little, pop, good to go. And now you'll smooth that out with the reamer there. Get it nice and spherical. Yeah, just using that octagonal reamer, Nathan Smith tools. Using the graphite reamer instead of the brass there since the opening is so wide and also the graphite won't leave any uh, marks on the glass. You put that in the kiln. Polished the end there so Dustin was just letting me know the, uh, the back end was hot so I didn't uh, actually get myself on it there. And now you're going to go and shape the neck. You got another much thinner piece of serendipity here. Yeah, we're going to shape the neck while um, the other piece stabilizes in the kiln. And then we'll, we're going to attach the other part of serendipity to the can. So going in here and you're just going to blow out a little bit on the end, make a bit of a bubble and kind of flatten it for that classic flat mouthpiece style. Yeah, and in this piece, we're going to use a very oxidizing flame. And you'll be able to see the difference even now already when I'm shaping that it looks white as opposed to all milky and fumy. So there, you can already see the differences of the different flames. You can see the purples and the oranges coming through in a way that it doesn't on the other one. And the way you'll be able to tell you really have an oxygen, oxygenating, oxidizing flame is lot, the, you'll be able to hear the oxygen. Yep, yeah, you'll be able to hear the oxygen. And also, you, you, you should use as many clues as you can around you. You can listen to your torch. You can look at the candles of your torch. You can look at the glass and how the glass is reacting. All those you can take into account and calculate if you're using an oxidizing or reducing flame. And I know that we have several videos about flame chemistry, flame theories, things like that. So you can watch those on the online school or here on the On The Torch channel and learn about flame chemistry. Absolutely. So you're sticking with that oxidizing flame as you go to shape the neck now, and that'll keep those nice purples and reds in there. Mm -hmm. Then you heat that up and then just pull just a little bit. Because remember, it's super soft this color, so I really don't need to put in too much heat for it to get the movement that I want. Super gentle with it there. Letting it cool completely because you don't want any movement when you move on to the next section. Kind of checking how long you want to make the neck. You always yeah. want to have it proportional with the rest of the piece. And you're going to go in here and do a, a little flame cut here as well. Just take that off and get it ready to attach. And it's really not that big of a handle or stem. And you guys can see at the end that it is the right size, it even, even on the big size for a piece like this. And it's really not that big of a stem. Using your mini torch again on that serendipity to get just the spot you want hot. So you can kind of bulge it out a little. And that's where you'll make the attachment to the cam. Yep. There it goes. Pop that little hole. And the same way you could see the, the air disturbing the mini torch flame is what you were mentioning with mm. your uh, with finding a hole in the, the torch flame. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm going to open that up with the reamer. Making a nice big hole here for a connection since you want this to be a lot of airflow. You know, it is the stem of the piece. Pop, pop that in the kiln. Exactly, I'll pop that in for you. And now you'll shape up the other section of serendipity to yeah. attach to the top of the can. And I'll still be using the oxidizing flame. You can see that in this shot. You can see that it's a really oxygen rich flame and the candles are not bright yellow or bright white. They're more of a, a deeper blue color. Super tight too. Yeah. They're, they're real, you know, really um, pointy candles kind of. And you can even see the glass, how it, th this flame is burning off the fume that I put on earlier. So that's another clue that you can tell that I'm using an oxidizing flame. A little bit of uh, other colors coming off the back side of the glass there. If you look on the right of the flame, you can kind of see them coming off there. Yeah, it's super cool. I really love this color. One of my favorites. Putting some air in there and you can see this color so soft. It's just really floppy almost. So uh -huh. you got to get it into a, a nice cylinder here. Really soft, really floppy. 
It's it's almost difficult to use actually. It's that soft, but it's fun and super beautiful. So going in there now, that you have a nice cylinder. Going to open up a hole and of course make this the right size to attach to the hole you have on the top of the can. So just put a little bit of air in there. Grab my jacks, open that up. A little marbling with the back of the jacks there. Make sure it's nice and square to the rest of the piece before you open it up. And this is the section for the top of the can. It's just going to heat it up and then attach it to the yellow, the North Star yellow, which is not really yellow. Like when I think that's why it's underrated because it's not, it's like a transparent yellow. And when people think of yellow right now, they're thinking of like an opaque crayon right. yellow. I think in taxi cab yellow, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And it's, it's a little more subtle. Yeah. Going in there, you can see the lip wrap glowing on the section, a nice hot seal. And look at the difference between the top section and the bottom section of that serendipity. Yeah. Very cool. One of my favorite colors, actually. And you decided it was a little bit more glass than you needed on the mm -hmm. top, so you're going to go in and flame cut that off, make it nice and proportional. Yep, totally. And that's, that's really good if you guys can pay attention to the proportions of your piece, and you might want to look at some ancient artifacts you know greek and roman vessels egyptian vessels things like that those guys were masters of proportion and they might give you some clues onto what what um golden ratio proportion stuff is you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. heating up that top section there it was a little off center so you're putting more heat in the section you wanted to move a little bit more to even it out just having that melt in come closer to the center of the piece and we're gonna blow that out blow out that lip wrap still super oxidizing flame there you can also see at the end of your flame how it's kind of whipping around from all the oxygen pressure yeah and and because the serendipity is so soft I'm really gonna heat up more of the yellow and the radiant heat from the yellow is going to really bring that serendipity to the heat base that I need right the yellow needs a lot more heat to move the same amount yes don't want to overblow the serendipity focusing still on that connection rounding it out going on to the marver heating that up and then i'm going to blow just a little bit and just trying to get these all lined up right you want a nice consistent can shape before you start you know attaching the neck or pushing the bowl or anything like that just going to heat this up and going for that straight walls Go into the marver there and just being very light with the pressure, you know, just barely rolling it on the marver there, straightening things out. You don't want to really push because you could deform the glass too much. It's so, so soft. Putting some air in there back to the marver, especially with a soft color like this. It's all about stages, moving it a little bit at a time mm -hmm. until you have it just where you want it. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Especially with a soft color like this. And now a critical thing, you got to measure the downstem. Getting a second opinion here. I, I think it looks good. All right, well, we're going to put it in. We'll see if it's good or not. We had a, we had a bit of trouble with the first time we did this, so we're, we're aiming to not tag the downstem on the bottom this time. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't go so well. So you've opened up a hole on the top, and you're going to open this hole up big enough that it will accept the flared piece of tubing that you're putting in from the downstem. Uh, yep. What size tubing is that for the downstem? Nine and a half. Nice. And you just flared it out there at the top so it would seal on nicely. Yep. Drop it in with those diamond shears, also from Mountain Glass Arts. Oh, yes. This is the other tool that Joe wanted me to try this week. It is an affordable diamond shears. And so we'll find the links and put those in the description. But I'm pretty sure these are, are real cost effective and they get the job done for sure. Absolutely. So you're putting on a little extra clear to the seal here to close that hole up a little and give it a little extra glass there. Mm -hmm. And then I might need to clean this up a little bit. Open that up. Just make sure that the hole is the right size. It's no, no extra glass hanging on there that you don't want. Yeah, it's it's the hole is real important for you guys to pay attention to, especially at the beginning. Too big, all of the flour will go through. Too small, won't even work. So. Right. Make sure you pay attention to the size of your hole. So you started pushing just a little bit with the bowl push. Gonna adjust the hole size a little more now that it's kind of compressed in, and you'll start to press it the rest of the way. Just gonna heat this up. 
and you're kind of doing this move in more steps than you would with like a, a regular bowl or something like that since it's a more subtle move with the down stem attached yeah for the two reasons one that we've talked about with a soft color and the other is that it that it is a bubbler just in general i do this in more than one move because you know you don't want to accidentally get going too far or get really off center with the down stem something like that and you yeah. can see the down stem isn't straight at the moment but you're going to fix that with the tungsten pick there you go in with the tungsten just trying to straighten that out so you just kind of heat it up where that connection where that down stem connects around the bowl mm -hmm. and then you can straighten it out and you may have to do that again you know once you finish all your top shaping since this color is so soft it really wants to flop around yeah it's it's good to get it kind of close right now and then at the end i may may want to just put that shape in finalize it a little bit more but but at this point i want to get it close to where i want it to end up and now you can go in again now that you widen the hole a little with the bull push and that down stem is now nice and centered gonna open up the side here and this will be the connection point for the the stem and the mouthpiece Mm -hmm. So putting some air in with the bowl push to block the air coming out of the bowl. And you figured it might be a little easier to do that in the flame with the blow hose attached. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I just want to make sure I get it precise. So put it right in there. Blow. And this is a sensitive color. So just try to make it as nice as possible. Being very gentle. You know, it's not like some colors where you can just really puff and the hole mm -hmm. just open in the middle, you know. If you puffed here, you have a big old bubble. Yeah, exactly. The too much would open, so I got to go really carefully. Opening that up with your uh, brass reamer and then, you know, making it nice and round with the graphite one. And uh, you're going to attach that stem on now. Just kind of checking it out, making sure that it's, you know, holding it in the place that I want it, make sure it's going to look okay. I think that looks good. Very nice uh, color combo, too. You even got the uh, the purple portions to match nicely. All right, let's go ahead and attach it. I think you might want to pop it in the kiln, though. All right. Give it a, give it a few minutes, you know. Not, maybe not 10 minutes on this one, just five minutes, you know. Not a ton of super huge seals yet. All right. Pop that back out. Now it's time. Cool. Let's do it. Nice hot seal there. Push and pull. Yep, and there you go. You can see it connected. I'll have to add a little bridge here to make sure that... That that's really sealed nicely and i would now i think that right now i would attach a bridge and still while the while the stem is sealed pop that hole for the carb mm, totally yeah. yeah rather than waiting until yeah. later like you did yeah. use your use your uh well i wanted to show them what to do <laughs> if you sure forget to. <laughs> sure you did uh -huh. <laughs> so you are going to attach a bridge here so yeah. you can work that seal in you know you made made sure the stem was nice and straight yeah. and now you can bridge it up grab totally. a piece of uh 12 mil rod, or uh excuse me eight seven mil uh that's about seven yeah seven mil rod yeah. there using your mini torch to make sure your it's all sealed in there of course your bridge is no good if it isn't sealed in yeah and it's yeah because as soon as you get it hot, it'll break. And you don't want it to break when the whole rest of the piece is hot because that's... It's just, it's not a good situation. It's a bad time. So we'll pop that in the kiln for, you know, yeah. maybe another five, seven minutes. Yeah. Let it all come up to temp. And this would be, I would do the, the seal and then put the carb in. Right. So yeah. it's right now is when you would uh, yeah. open the carb up. Or, well, yeah, you work on the seal, open the carb. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, with the way that we did it is fine for sure. But this is definitely... We're doing the same thing with the tungsten here. We're trying to fix a little hole that's open. These are great tools. And and the ones from BC are really nice, actually. The nice long handle is very nice and the long stem, you know, yeah. can really get it in where you need it. And the tungsten is nice because you can use it in the flame and it's not going to melt. Yeah. And well, what's cool about the tungsten is that it actually will stick to the glass. So mm -hmm. I can heat it up and then stick it and then pull it with the part that's stuck to the tungsten. And then kind of wiggle it off at the yeah. end. Yeah. And it won't melt. And it won't melt. So now you're going to go in and block the bowl again and put some air into that seal. You're going to make sure it's shaped nicely. Make sure it's nice and evenly sealed all the way around. And now we're going to heat it up and just remove the bridge. Snip it off there and then grab it with the diamond shears. Pull off that bottom section. Now just throw that bridge in the bucket. I'll clean that up later. And go back in here and just do any final shaping or um, straightening of the stem that I need to and then take off the mouthpiece. Open that hole up, pull the clear off, 
go back in with your punty make sure there's no little bits of clear left on there because you know somebody would definitely notice that every time they go in to hit the piece yep 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 so now i'm gonna open this up with my uh, more narrow reamer and oh that's a very nice shape there i like it you're gonna pop that in the kiln for a minute before you do any shaping on the neck you know it's been out for a while did that seal you could push it and shape the neck but you know no, let's not chance it better to be safe than sorry so now you're gonna pop that out of the kiln and you're going to shape the neck there and I've, I've increased the amount of propane in this flame, but there still is a lot of oxygen in there. And I'm really not going to get the flame and the piece hot enough for it to alter the color very much. Right. Just a very gentle, gentle heat, just enough to bend the neck. You know, you're not really changing the chemistry of the glass too much. No, we're just going to push it a little bit. And then we have the neck bent. Boom. Make sure it was nice and straight there. Just a fine adjustment and nailed it. So now we're going to pick out this carb. And uh, this became a little bit of a harder prospect now that you have two holes open on the piece. It's a little bit harder to open it up. And, and it, I actually ended up making the, the can part a little thick. So it's a little bit tricky. So what I'm doing is going in there with my clear and trying to pull out any excess glass on the surface and get closer to the inner wall. And that way it's going to make it easier for me to blow that out kind of pulling the glass out there and you're actually going to use your tweezers even to pull a little bit more away from the surface so just pull this out and getting that inner inner tube to come to the surface and then i can either break it off or blow it but in this case kevin's going to help me he's going to block one of the holes i'm going to block one of the holes i'm just going to blow that out using your kevlar pad to block the mouthpiece hole there open that up a little bit and you know this is cool and it looks okay like this but i really think it needs something added on there so what we're going to do is we're going to add on a little bit of a raised carb situation absolutely you have a section from that serendipity tubing that was sitting on your bench there so you just slowly warmed it up and uh, you can shape that into the raised carb you're gonna blow that out and look at how fluid and liquidy this glass is just like this is just crazy watching off. you work it like yeah. a little bit of air a little bit of pull it's just woo off yeah. it goes just gonna heat that up and blow it out a little bit get this ready you want to make sure it's uh, proportional to the rest of the piece using your marva there straightening it out you're gonna pull it out a little bit more make it a little bit smaller the marion man just opens that hole up so easily a little too easy <laughs> going in with your jacks there it's just a tiniest bit of pressure on there and it's so so fluid so i was thinking about it you guys i'm going to actually give these diamond shears and straight shears away to one of you guys who comments in this video so we'll have three giveaways on this video so make sure you share the video with your friends comment on the video and we're going to be giving away the diamond shears and the straight shears and the piece to Heck three yeah. different people so now that you let that rest in the kiln for a second, you can grab the piece and the carb and you're going to seal them up. Just get them really nice and hot. And I'm going to touch them and connect them. Push. Push. Pull. That's it. That's the methodology. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're just going to look it all around there. Check every angle. Make sure it's uh, kind of aligned the way you want. And you can take that blow to off. And that'll close up the end so you can, you know, make, the, make sure that seal is nice and even. And you guys can see as I'm moving the piece on really the difference between how the serendipity reacted to an oxygenating flame and a reduction flame. Totally. Those two colors are, are super different there. And you can, you know, you can see why a lot of people like the oxygenating flame root. It's just such a vibrant color. I love it. It's a it's great color combo. Yeah. So you're just picking out the end there, making it a little bit smaller. And you'll cover that hole again. I'll go in again for the uh, assist on the bowl hole. So you can pop that Just hole pop open. pop that hole open. There we go. And now you're going to use that reamer. Open it up a little. And you want to make sure it's positioned nicely you know, for ergonomics. Yeah, I have it kind of tilted back towards the user a little bit. As opposed to off the front. There's definitely different positions that will work. But I felt like this was good fitting position for this piece kind of a wide thumb carb uh -huh. and of course using your mini torch on that seal there want to make sure it's uh, nice and sealed all one piece of glass working it uh, you know section by section so that it doesn't get too hot and flop around 
All right, so now we have this pretty pretty close to done. I'm gonna just even out that hole, open it up a little bit, and then we're gonna put that in the kiln and we will take off the bottom. Remember to comment on the video for these diamond shears, straight shears in this piece. Absolutely. So after that sat in the kiln for about 10 minutes, you've got your Kevlar glove on, Kevlar pad, and you're just holding the neck there while you take the bottom blow tube off to finish the base of the piece. Heating it up and pulling it off. And you're, you're kind of working a little quickly since it, it is definitely hot still. You yeah. know, you're starting to feel the heat through the through the pad there. Uh -huh. I, yeah, so I'm going to double up the pad here. This is a cool pad that Tony showed us about. It's like for pipe welders or mm -hmm. for like, uh, yeah, like soldering, soldering uh, copper pipes, pipes and walls, and right? Stuff, yeah. yeah. So it works good. And going in there, pulling that extra little bit of clear off, making sure there's no blow tube left and that there's a nice termination on the base of the piece. And then you can flatten it on the marver. Cool, and there it is. I'll set this up for you guys so you can check it out. Boom, nice little bubbler. Look at that. Yep. North Star Yellow and the two versions of Serendipity. Pretty cool. That's all from the same piece of tubing. Yep, and this is obviously for any of you guys. Just comment on the video. Let us know what you think. And you can see the piece there. Nice flared mouthpiece with the flattening there. Carb off to the side. And of course, the, the kind of hazy color at the bottom there. And that yellow section in the middle, which is super cool. So thanks you guys for watching, and we'll see you in two weeks. Welcome back, you guys. Thanks for watching the video. We hope that you learned something, a tip or a trick, something that you can use in your own work. Make sure you hashtag Revere Glass School, and we'll check it out. Absolutely. Can't wait to see what you guys make. Yep. I got some questions for you, Dustin. I have a question for you, Kevin. What? Yep. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Flipping the script. Let's yep. do it. What do you got for me? All right. It's a question that's more in your wheelhouse. It's from Chalkboard Astro. Do you guys film the intro, demo, and outro all in one sitting? No, we actually film it over a couple days. So we'll do the demo, then I'll go back, take all the demo footage, edit it up, you know, cut it down. And then we'll usually do the intro, outro, or the voiceover first one day, and then the other one the next day. Yep. And you just keep the shirt on, on uh, standby, so yep. you can uh, get back in uniform. Yep, I set this shirt aside that I use for the demo, so yeah. There you go. All right. Now I got a couple for you. All right. First up here from Hard Times FPV. How long does it take to anneal glass in a kiln? I uh, hear 24 hours a lot, but is there any other time I should leave it in longer? Also, when it's done, how do you go about taking it out of the kiln? Yeah. Um, well, it really depends on how thick your glass is, right? Like a super thin thing really needs a minimal kiln cycle. You know, you put it at 1050, hold it for 15 minutes, crash the kiln. And that, that even works for many of the, the pieces that we make. Um, if you're making something extra thick, you, it could take a long time to anneal, in fact, years. Uh, I believe the Hubble telescope lens took over a year to anneal. Wow. Uh, look it up, Google it, you guys, but there's some huge telescope lenses that took a long, long time to anneal. And so if you're doing a big, you know, three or four inch marble, it might be a three or four day cycle or something. Pro probably less than 24 hours. But I think once you get past like a foot or six mm, inches, okay. then you start to go into multiple days. There's a book called Glass Notes by Henry Halem. And he was a teacher at Kent State University. I believe he has some annealing cycles in that book where he was mm. using different mathematical sequences, including the Fibonacci sequence. And that may be a good resource. For us as pipe makers, borosilicate is so thermal resistant that it really doesn't need complicated annealing cycles more often than not. And, and usually our kilns, especially the higher end kilns, have a built-in annealing cycle in their program as well. And then when you take it out of the kiln, you usually just wait until it's about just over room temperature, yeah. open it up, take it out, good to go. Yeah, you can take it out when it's hotter, but I tend to wait till it's in the 200s before I really crack my kiln all the way open. And you, you usually pretty much wait until you can pick it up with your yeah. bare hand. I usually let it sit in the kiln so I can pick it up. Yep. Unless there's an exception of something I'm right. trying to do. You know? Right. Yeah. All right. And uh, next up here from Posted Pat, where is a good place to learn scientific glass blowing techniques? Oh. Well, I'm going to give a shout out to Salem, all of you guys in New Jersey. Thank you. I, I really appreciate the information I got from Salem. And that that I think is the best, if not the only place that's the actual curriculum on scientific mm -hmm. glass. 
Revere Glass used to have a scientific glass blower in one class. Sue's taught that, and this is scientific glass blower, but I don't think there's much other than Salem. Really. Yeah, I mean, none that I've heard of, so yeah. it seems to be the spot. Mm -hmm. Cool. We gotta give this bubble cap away, Dustin. Let's give the bubble cap away. It is going to Steve Prescott. Thanks for watching, man. Thanks for the comment, and hope you dig it. Yeah, I love the Raticello. I love it. It's... I hope you enjoy it, man. Absolutely, good bubble cap. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, make sure you comment on the video because we're going to be giving away this piece. It's serendipity in yellow. I really enjoyed making it, so comment on the video. We'll send it out to one of you guys. Absolutely. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. Cool. See you guys in two weeks.